Hi, I'm Kathy from Absolutely Fabulous at Home, and today I thought I'd show you something you could do if you had a project pack of Annie Sloan chalk paint. So we're going to use three colors, and the colors I've chosen are Aubusson Blue, Scandinavian Pink, and Cream. And I've actually created a little project sheet that could go in your kit on how to do a frotage or a, a, a weathered kind of looking pot for your garden, plant pot. These are inexpensive dollar store pots, two different sizes, but as you can tell, they're shiny plastic. And we are going to make them look like they're an old weathered pot. Now, I did a different color combination on this, but this is so simple to do. Put this one over here. Now, you wouldn't probably have three brushes at home, but you would rinse your brush out in between. I'm going to use three different brushes to make this faster, but in your project kit you get up to four cans of paint and waxes, and you can mix and match your colors. You can do three paints and one wax, you can do two paints and two waxes, whatever you need to make your project happen. But for this particular project, because this is going to be an outdoor plant pod, I'm only going to use the three colors and no wax. But this is pretty simple. I am just going to slather on some paint. And before this dries, I'm going to take a piece of crumpled up paper. And I want lots of good wrinkles, so I crumpled them up and then crumpled them again. And I'm just going to smooth it on here. I don't want to rub it, I just want to smooth it on. And I'm going to let the paint be absorbed by some of the paper. And what that's going to do is give me a finish here that's not exactly even all the way around with paint. So I'm going to do another, so it's holding onto it, that's tricky. And another section, I don't want a solid, solid paint. I'm going to do the same thing. This is frotage. I've done my fireplace at home like this. It creates uneven paint on the finish, uneven layers of paint. Go all the way around here. I do want it to be covered. And I've put my paint out here on the mix mat because paint doesn't stay stuck to that. Great way to use four of the paint I need. And then just to finish it off, I'm going to do the inside because if you were doing, if this, when this is a plant pot, you're going to see your earth doesn't come all the way level with the surface. So you want to paint part way down inside so that your soil. There's our first coat and what I'm going to do to speed up our process is dry this. I'm going to get a hair dryer going. I don't have that much paint on here so it's only going to take a little bit of drying. So you know your paint is dry when it's not shiny anymore. So I'm ready to do my next coat. Put my brush over here. Let me grab my next. I'm going to do Scandinavian pink. So again, just dipping in the tips, doing exactly the same thing, going over the whole pot again, using Scan pink. And then before it dries, with a fresh piece of paper, so that I don't get I don't like to transfer my blue to my pink. I just want to get rid of the. I found brown paper. You can use tissue paper. You just want something that gets lots of good crinkles. And you just want to smooth it. You don't want to leave just your handprint on it because then you would end up with your fingers like a handprint. So you want to smooth it. So now some of that has come off. Go around, do the same thing. I'm going to do this. You 
can pick the variety of colors. Whatever makes you happy. I've given two choices here. A blue combination and a green combination are what's on the project sheet. But you wonder, how much can I do with a small project pot? Well, one of these little pots will cover 18 square feet. That's enough to do a small table, a chair, a small bookcase or, or a very small dresser or a bedside table. It's surprising how much paint is in a small can. And one of the things to think about is what color was your project to start with. If you are trying to cover something dark, like a dark mahogany or a painted brown or black piece of furniture, and you're trying to make it white or an off-white or a cream color or a lighter color, you're going to have to possibly use two coats. So that's one way to sort of figure out. Then you would take your 18 square feet and divide it by two, so now you have nine square feet that you're working with. But you can do a rough measurement on your piece to see if a project pot is enough. So how well you can see that here, but I've got now some of the blue showing through a little bit more in places, and the scan pink, Scandinavian pink, is a little deeper in other places. And then, like I did before, I'm just going to kind of feather it into the inside of the pot. So some of the blue shows. This pot's easy to do because it has ridges in the plastic. Some of them are smooth, like this one was completely smooth, so it was a great way to get texture. Same thing, we're going to dry this and come back and do our third coat. So we've got Obasan Blue Base Coat, and take it off, and then we have our Scandinavian Pink second coat, and removed using the crinkle paper. The last coat is cream, and we do exactly the same thing. Do a layer of coat. Now, Sean, our cameraman, asked a very good question. He said, was it a dark to light composition? You could look at it that way. Um, this one was done the opposite. It was done light to dark. So it's more to do with what do you want the finished coat. So when you're painting something, it's always what do you want the end result to be. I did want it to be a lighter look here. So I started with a darker color, which gave me a good base. And the pink where the pink is sort of wiped away from some of the blue, the blue turns a little bit more like a gray. So the idea is to make this look like it's a stone pot. And that's what I, I want, is that kind of finish. So now I'm getting hints of pink, hints of the blue, which is coming through as a gray. But because I've used paper, we'll go around and finish this, and then we'll take a, a good look at it. It's the crinkles in the paper and the loose painting that give me sort of a weathered look. And I'm reusing this paper. If I were doing a really big pot, I might not be able to use this one piece of paper all over because it would become too saturated with my the color I'm trying to remove. But all these little creases in this paper are what are giving me this sort of weathered look on my pot. This is one of those so fast, simple little projects to do when you have a few minutes and you want to do something creative and you're not sure what that is. You don't even have to have a lot of imagination to do something like this because you can buy everything in the kit. You can order our project pots online and when you do that, you just click on the project pot kit or the yeah, project kit and you shoot me an email to tell me what colors you'd like, or you can give me a call and we'll discuss the colors, because I can't choose those colors for you. They are random and you are able to pick what it is you would like. So again, just to finish it, I'm gonna quickly take the, the cream color and go over the inside just a little bit. Then I'll let this sit and dry. If I were using it inside, I would probably put a wax on this because it would give me a nice little shine. 
and I could make it even a little bit more distressed if I used a dark wax because the wax would go in and create some interesting shadows on this the little detail that's here on this plastic pot. But I'm perfectly happy with this the way it is. It now looks like a little weathered pot. And I think you can probably get in a little bit closer to see the, the little marks on it and to see how the wrinkles in the paper actually define wrinkles on here to make it look like it's sort of cracking and weathering. Pretty interesting little technique. Let it dry, put something pretty in it, and I have a project complete. And you can see it did not take very much paint, maybe not even an ounce of paint to do each one of those colors. So I would get quite easily probably four or five pots out of something this, out of the project pots, if, even if I did the larger size. So a project kit comes with th up to three paints and a wax, or two paints and two waxes. It comes with one of the round brushes or a flat brush. This depends on what kind of project you're intending to do. It comes with the buffing cloth, a little green cloth for when you're polishing your wax. It comes with some sandpaper, a can opener, a little chip brush, which is great if you wanted to get in and get some detail work done. If I wanted to really work in some wax here and I didn't want to go to the expense of a brush, this little feathery brush will do quite a lot of work for me. Some waxing cloths, which are just the blue cloths, a paint stick, a color card, and a getting started in our handy hint sheet. So the kits are $100 and they are on for $75 right now as we go through COVID and I am trying to help people with some paint therapy. I personally find there's a lot of therapy in being creative when you feel like you can't control everything that's going on around you. It's a way to get out of your head and onto some art. Be creative, have fun, and check out the website, absolutelyfab.ca.